Hello, and welcome back to the Godly Playroom. Or if this is your first time, well, come on in and find a spot to be. We hope that you are able to enjoy the full video, but if you need to stop and pause at different times, that's okay too. My name is Ruth Womix, and it's my privilege to be in this space in our Godly Playroom here at First United Church that serves in the city and the county of Wetaskiwin. I wonder, I wonder what you need to do to be ready. It's the beginning of February. It's cold outside this week. But we are in Black History Month as well. And I've been learning all kinds of new things, not just about Black history south of the border, of which there seems to be a lot, but also about some of the history here in Canada and in Alberta and in our area in particular. Today's story is the story of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. You may have heard that name before, or you may have noticed some different information online around his birthday in January when the United States celebrates Martin Luther King Jr. Day. It's a story that is copyright by Godly Play, but it is shared with permission. As we get ready today, you might like to have some things ready at your home or wherever you're watching this video. You might like to get a candle, whether that's a flame or a battery operated one. You might like to have some art materials, pencil crayons, crayons, chalk, some paper, a pen, some paints, scissors, glue, any of those kinds of things that are usually around most homes, just so that you can be in a different way of processing this story when we get to our time of response. You might also like to have something for feast. And don't worry, you don't need to look up fancy recipes or spend the whole day in the kitchen getting ready. Although if you do, give me a call, I'd love to come over. All you'll need is perhaps a glass of water or juice, your cup of coffee or tea, and a little something to tide you over. The feast is more determined by the quality of the company than the quantity or the content of the materials. Wow, that seems like an awful lot of things. If you've been in the Godly Playroom before, you know though to just sit back and trust the process. So I wonder what you need to be ready to settle into this time. Perhaps a few deep breaths, maybe one more trip to the bathroom. Maybe a prayer. Maybe to put your phone on silent or airplane mode. Maybe to invite other people in your household to be part of the circle. And take some time with them, just settling into this space. Maybe there have been things going on in your day or in your week that you need to just set aside for a while. Not that you're going to forget about them or try to avoid them, but just for this time and space to know that God holds them and you. Are you ready? It's so wonderful to have you here with us. We do hope you come close to the holy in our time together. So let's light our candle.
we remember that once there was someone who said such amazing things and did such wonderful things that people began to follow him. And the more they followed him, the more they heard him talk about a kingdom. But it wasn't like any kingdom they'd ever lived in. And it wasn't like any kingdom they'd ever visited. It wasn't like any kingdom they'd ever heard of. And so one day they just had to ask, what is the kingdom of heaven like? And usually when he asked, was asked those questions, he told them a parable. And then people began to wonder who this person really was, that he spoke about the kingdom of heaven that was like nothing they'd ever encountered. And they would have to ask him, who are you? And one time, he said, I am the light. Let's enjoy that light. I'm going to put it back on the shelf though, so that I don't knock it over when we tell this story. Are you ready for a story? This is the story of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Sometimes we remember it in January on or around his birthday. But it is a good story to remember at any time of the year. When Martin was born in Atlanta, Georgia on January 15th, 1929, his parents named him Michael, after his father. But then when he was about five years old, his father decided to change his and Michael's name to Martin Luther King, in honor of the 16th century reformer. Martin Luther tried to make the world a better place, too. Martin had an older sister and a younger brother. And every night at six o'clock, Daddy King would gather the family around the supper table to talk about God and the world. He thought it was important for his children to learn about serious things, even when they were very young. They talked often about the situation for black people, about freedom, and what it would be like if everybody was treated the same. But Martin didn't only learn about important things from his father. One day when Martin was about six years old, his best friend, who was white, told him that they weren't allowed to play together anymore. Martin was very sad and confused and angry. And when his mom heard about it, she took him on her knee and she talked with him about slavery and prejudice. Prejudice can sometimes mean that people don't like you just because they don't like the color of your skin. But she also told Martin about stories from the Bible where God had overcome slavery and prejudice. And she said that Martin could too. 
When Martin grew up, he became a Baptist minister, just like his father and his grandfather. And he began to work for change, so that black people would be treated the same as everyone else. No one knew where that change might begin, or what it would look like. until one day in 1955 in Montgomery, Alabama, a black woman named Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat for a white person. And that changed everything. In those days, buses were separated into three sections. Whites, mixed, and the black folk were required by law to sit at the back. They could sit other places, but they had to give up their seat if asked to do so. On that day, the bus driver asked Rosa to move to the back of the bus to make room for some white people. The other black people moved, but Rosa did not. She said it wasn't so much she was tired, she was just tired of living with unjust laws. She was arrested. And when many black people and some white people heard about it, they were angry and they wanted to fight. And so Martin went to Montgomery, Alabama to help the people there learn how to fight back peacefully. They decided to walk to work and not take the bus. This way people weren't at risk of getting into fights and the bus company would lose some money. They walked to work for 381 days some of them over very long distances. And you know what happened? The city changed the law so that blacks weren't required anymore to move to the back. They could sit wherever they wanted. This was the first of many peaceful protests Martin organized that began to make changes in the United States. But it's not easy to work for change. It takes courage and faith. Some people were very mean to Martin and his family. Someone tried to blow up their house. Others tried to hurt them with words. Some used knives, even threatened with guns. Many black people wanted to fight back. But Martin wouldn't give up. He said peaceful actions bring about peaceful solutions. Still, he was arrested 29 times for protesting peacefully against unjust laws. Then in 1963, a huge crowd of people went to Washington, D.C. They marched for freedom and for jobs. It was there that Martin gave his most famous speech. I have a dream. And he called people to be thankful to God and to work to make that dream of freedom for everyone a reality. I have a dream, Martin said. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a world, in this nation, 
where they are judged not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. That same year, Martin won the Nobel Peace Prize at the age of 34. And the next year, the Civil Rights Act made into law much of what Martin dreamed. But Martin didn't give up. He kept traveling the countryside, helping people organize protests that were peaceful, inviting them to be part of the dream. Until one day in 1968, he was shot and killed in Memphis, Tennessee. He had been there helping them to organize for one more peaceful protest. He was buried in Atlanta, where he had been born. And we remember Martin Luther King Jr., who had a dream and courageously traveled everywhere to work for change so that all people, and especially black people, would be treated the same as everyone else. I wonder what you liked best about this story. I wonder what's most important about this story. Know that you can pause the video at any time if you want to have more conversation with some of the people in your household. I wonder if there's any part of this story we could leave out and still have all the story that we need. I'd like to leave out the part that people thought it was okay to bomb his house or to threaten him or his family. We live at a time where people are still prejudiced, racist, sexist, ageist. And too often, some people think it's okay to resort to violence or to hurt someone else just because we disagree or they're different or we don't like what's going on. So I wonder where you are in this story. Or what part of this story might be most like your life right now? I wonder if you've ever worked for change. Or what's given you 
the courage or the faith to speak up in peaceful ways. I wonder if you've ever been unfairly judged by how you look or how you talk or the color of your skin or your gender or who you love. On the few occasions it's happened to me, it isn't very pleasant. And sometimes I've been able to say something or do something or hold that other person's words to account. But sometimes I feel like that five-year-old Martin, six-year-old Martin, who is just sad and confused and angry. And there is lots to wonder about in this story, but I'm going to start putting it away. And you can begin to think about what you might like to do in response with your art materials, some time in prayer or journaling. Know that when you're in the Godly Playroom, you can find this story on the Saint shelf. And this little booklet tells you the whole story that you heard today. And it shows you where Montgomery, or sorry, where Georgia Atlanta is in the United States. And there's the flag of the United States. So there are the chairs that the family gathered around the dinner table. Martin and his sister and brother and mother and father. And something we don't do so often anymore. Have those family meals or get togethers, maybe on special occasions. And I know it got harder for our family as kids grew up and got involved in different things. Such an important time, though. And there's the bus that reminds us of Rosa Parks. I don't always think about change starting with those simple everyday things that we do. We often think it has to be something big or, or that we're too insignificant. And yet the simple act of refusing to move to the back of the bus was a catalyst for change. She did get arrested though. I think that's what keeps a lot of us sometimes is that fear of what might happen. Just why we need courage and faith. Because courage isn't about not being afraid. It's about being afraid and still doing what's right. Hmm. the children that remind us that the dream is bigger than just us. A dream that God shares. That all of God's children, all of God's creatures might be judged not on the color of our skin, but on the content of our character. and the color green. You might want to pause the video so you have a chance to get your art materials ready. And whenever you're ready, come on back. So I felt like doing some coloring.
We've got a box of crayons. 24 different colors, but I think there's way more colors that you can use if you want. I remember every year when we used to get a new box of crayons to start school. It was pretty exciting. Now people just want to use markers, paints. I like playing with paints. But sometimes it's fun just to play with crayons. And I was trying to think about what color of paper to use. I was thinking about today's story and how often we equate white with goodness or cleanliness purity. And we need to move beyond that and just see it as a good backdrop, perhaps, to let the other colors really shine. We sometimes think about the world as just being black or white. Kind of like pieces on a chessboard. And there's an interesting thing. When babies are first born, that's kind of what they see. And there's all kinds of research now apparently about making black and white images and some of those really big graphic designs that are all just black and white geometrics. But we don't stay a baby forever. And I'd like to hope, that just like our eyes develop and our brains develop, so that we can process different colors and shapes and images and learn more about them. And our vocabulary expands. And our world experiences expand. And we get beyond just thinking in terms of black and white. And we start enjoying all the colors of the rainbow. there's anything in our life that we would want to narrow down to just two choices. I mean, I don't like it when it's 30 below, but I would like it even less if my only choices were 30 below or 30 above. I like there being all those temperatures in between and windy days, and breezy days, and still days. Lots of difference there. And I like it too. That my food isn't all just one thing or another. I'm happy to eat leftovers. But I like different things every now and then.
I would find it really hard. As much as I like lettuce, to only ever eat lettuce, tomatoes and other vegetables. There's just so many different ways of being. So many different color combinations. amazing things that God created. And we've only begun to tap such a very small part of that vast diversity, all those differences. I wonder what you've changed up recently. Sometimes we get stuck. Or we're confronted with so much change that's outside our control. So we see it as something a little bit frightening. Maybe maybe 
Maybe we're afraid we're going to lose something if things are different. And we don't see all the possibilities. what we might actually gain. If everybody were treated well. If everybody was free. If our kids all had enough food to eat and a good place to go to school. A safe place to sleep at night. I wonder. I wonder what you might dream. Or what God might dream of how we could come together. Hmm. You might like to work with your materials for a little while longer. I'm going to start to clean up, get things ready for feast time. I'll see you back here in a few minutes. So welcome back. I hope you found something good for your feast. I found a few things. Need to remember to do my hands. Although I'm not always fussy about doing sanitizer just before I touch raw food, but that's what it is today. <sighs> But before we feast, I'll invite us to say our prayers. Sometimes we sing, sometimes we pray in silence. Sometimes we use our whole body, sometimes just our words. If you want to pray longer, you're certainly welcome to pause the video and join us whenever you're ready. I think I'd like to sing today. I don't know if you know this one. It's called For Health and Strength and Daily Food, We Give You Thanks, O oh God. And you start here and you jump high and then you just kind of the music just steps down. And it's one of those graces that you can sing as a round if you want. But I was thinking about all the things that are going on in our world and some of the things that had gone on in Martin's story and how we all need to just be perhaps a little more grateful for our health and our strength and our daily food and then put them to good use for God. So let's pray. For health and strength and daily food, we give you thanks, O oh God. So that's what it sounds like. I'll try it again. I might try it a little bit lower. I know I often sing a little bit higher than people like, but here we go. For health and strength and daily food, we give you thanks, O oh God. For health and strength and daily food, we give you thanks, O oh God. For health and strength and daily food, we give you thanks, O oh God. Amen. You might want to think up three words to put in there for yourself. Instead of health and strength and daily food, I wonder what you're thankful for. Hmm. 
I am very thankful for a warm place, not only to live and work, but to sleep and to tell stories in this past week. And I'm grateful for the sunshine today, for a glass of water that I didn't have to walk three miles or six miles or even longer to get some. And I'm thankful for this time with you. I wonder, what's been nourishing your spirit lately? Sometimes we take great care to eat well and to get rest and exercise, but we don't always build in that time for our spiritual nurture. So I wonder, I mean, apart from being part of a godly play story, what's been feeding your soul? This apple is just a wee bit tart. Mm. I am grateful for all those taste buds that are able to figure out tart and sour and sweet and salty and spicy, hot and cold, mushy, hard, mealy, all different kinds of textures, tastes, and sensations that our mouths and our taste buds are able to discern. I'm really grateful for that. And I'm really grateful. Think about all the things we do with water in a day. Drink it, wash it, brush our teeth, flush the toilet, clean our dishes, preferably not in the toilet. <laughs> it rains, it snows, it makes ice, it makes fog. When the light shines through it, it makes a rainbow. Wow, so many things we can do with water. I wonder what you're doing to make the world a better place. Not just for yourself, but for others. There's been a little bit in the news lately about some protests that are happening here in Canada. But they aren't always peaceful. And they aren't always really about making the world a better place for everybody. I think it takes a lot of courage and faith to not give up, but to keep holding to peaceful actions bringing about peaceful solutions. I wonder how you'll be part of God's dream this week. Because God needs people like you, people like me, people who see the beauty and wonder of the world, 
and love it so much, we're willing to work for change so that everybody gets to enjoy it. Hmm. Lots of big wondering in this story. Good thing we have a whole month to think and to talk about black history and some of those issues about racism and prejudice and how we make good changes. That's another thing we change. Because right now the light is just in this one place and time. But when we change the light, it can spread out until it fills this whole room. And it will find you wherever you are. And it is already with the protesters and the police, with the people who live in the midst of the protest and simply are trying to get to work or do what they need to do. I will continue to pray for peaceful solutions. But watch what happens when I change the light. Do you see it? God is good. All the time. All the time, God is good. So until we meet again, God bless you, richly and abundantly. Be well and look after one another.